welcome back to shifting to solids. I guess we should call this shifting back to shifting to solids. I know I took a break for a little bit um, after we did the transform tool. Um, I'm wrapping my head, <laughs> pun definitely intended, wrapping my head around how to use this wrap tool. Uh, it's not a tool I use very often, um, but I've played with it a little bit and figured out some things. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, practice assignment series. I'm going to continue with that. I know a lot of you guys are doing that packet, um, but we're going to do the wrap. 3d practice today so where does that guy live follow me up here to the top we'll take a look we have our uh transform which is right here i'm going to click that drop down arrow and we have wrap in decal so we're going to click wrap um and you'll see i have solid surface split and it's going to be asking for tools in a target and we'll go over those in a bit um but today we're going to be just focusing on solid wraps we're not going to be doing surfacing or splitting i feel like surfacing is going to have to be its own series in itself uh, there's a lot of things you can do with these tools, um, surface specific, but like I said, I like to start from basics and solids where you start with that. So we will go ahead and X out of that. Uh, like always, we should start with a sketch. So let's go ahead and start a sketch by pressing shift and S on our keyboard. Uh, let's click that top plane, P to hide those planes and end to normalize our view. Uh, next thing we're going to do is start a circle. And this is just a, we're gonna be making a cylinder out of it basically. I'll click a circle, center point circle by pressing C, click that origin, and we're gonna make this sucker pretty big. Uh, I got some different things I wanna show you guys today. Um, so let's do 24 inches in diameter. So you'll see we've got a pretty big circle there. After you get that circle, let's go to solids, shift E, and let's make that guy, um, we'll go 24 inches tall as well. So. We have some easy math to do, and you'll see we now have a 24 inch diameter cylinder that is 24 inches tall. Uh, now we need to do some other stuff. So I'm gonna turn my planes back on by pressing P. I know they're hard to see, but they're hiding down here. Um, for me, what I've noticed when I use this wrap tool, it's easier if you have them on like the, the right plane um, or the front plane, I guess you could do either one. Um, but I'm going to do it on, uh, so we're going to start another sketch and I'm going to do it on the right plane. Um, just so I can kind of keep things out of the way. And what I like to do, I mean, you could draw this and hide that part, but I'm just going to draw my stuff over here. Um, so I'm going to draw, maybe I want, um, a circle with a circle on the inside and I'm not even going to give it dimensions. I'm just going to play with some geometry. Maybe I have something along these lines. And yeah, that looks good to me. Trim some stuff up. We're just going to make a funky polygon really quick. And I'll trim those guys up too. And Let's add a circle there and a circle here. Cool. So we have this, this weird shape. I'm just drawing, drawing some stuff for the sake of drawing it to show the point. Um, so like I said, we'll go up here to our wrap tool. And again, wrap lives under transform. If we hover over it, you will see it says uh, that. There we go. Wrap faces or sketch entities around a cylindrical or conical part or surface, create, add to, or subtract from, or intersect solids, create surfaces, or split the target face, adjust the position of the result by specifying anchor points, angle, or shift. So we're gonna focus, like I said, only on the solid stuff today. So we're gonna click wrap. And again, we'll switch back to solid. And we get our typical new add, remove, intersect. So tools, tools is gonna to be your sketch. What do we wanna wrap? So I'm gonna, Zoom out a little bit and I'm going to pick sketch two. I want sketch two to be my tool. And what's my target? I'm going to pick this cylinder. So part one, face of extrude one is going to be my uh, target. And you'll see it's going to add that to my uh, cylinder around that face. For some reason, it flips it over every time. Um, so when you do this, you're going to have to say position with that little drop down, and you're going to want to change this. So obviously angle is going to be angle, uh, U shift 
if we look here, let me manipulate that, change this to one, U shift is gonna be horizontal and V shift is gonna be vertical. So I can change this to five, it'll shift that five down from where it has it. Um, we'll go zero back on all that. Angle, I wanna rotate this 180 degrees because it's opposite of how I drew it. And um, let's go, since we're 24 inches tall, let's go 12 inches on that V shift and you'll see that it's gonna split. So maybe we'll only go six inches down. And we can get that to wrap like so. What you're seeing here is a thickness of 0.1. Um, if I wanted to change that, same thing, I could go here and I can use the scroll tool. So maybe I'm using this to uh, extrude something or maybe I'm doing to, uh, I wanna emboss it. So I would say the remove and I want that spot cut out, okay? Uh, it's kind of cool if you're doing some 3D prints or if you have some mills. Um, I know for years I struggled trying to figure out how to put text into things and literally I would just extrude, uh, I would like make a sketch exist just past the 3D spot or and, and use Boolean and it didn't always turn out the way I wanted to. Let's turn this back to zero. Um, and you can get geometry, shape geometry put in like that in a very specific way. So I can do new. I can add a new piece there. Um, I can do add, add and go from there. I can say remove um, if I want that hole cut out. And then I could do the same thing. I could do wrap again. And tools are going to be, we're going to go solid, sketch. Same thing. My target's going to be here. Oil position. Rotate this 180. And this time I'm going to do new. And we'll say, okay, I got to come back to wrap one. Uh, we did 1.2. So 1.2. And now I have a piece that will fit in the side of that. There we go. And it'll fit flush with our cutout. Now, obviously, if we were to make this in the real world, we would have to add some tolerances, some gaps to be able to make that fit. But now you have your place to start and you know that that is gonna wrap and it's gonna go around perfect. So that was just some random geometry I made. Um, if we go back into sketch two, um, I'm gonna get rid of this geometry. Just some simple lines. But I wanna show you another feature I found out, okay? Um, the way they market this is to do the text tool. So I'll show you that really quick. Um, Mesa makes with the stencil just so it'll work out. Uh, let's make that a little smaller. We'll go like five inches tall. There we go. So I can do the same thing. Uh, you'll see that it's wrapping that text around, but it wants to default um, to that, that surface. So make sure you click. So we'll go wrap one, um, zero on that guy. We'll flip the direction. There we go. And now my, my letters are embossed into that or cut out of that. We'll do the same thing for wrap two. Zero there. Flip that direction and we'll say new. And I will get a bunch of little puzzle pieces that I can throw in to that, that deal. So pretty simple, obviously draw some lines, draw some text, but the cool feature I wanted to show you, let's go back here. Let's get rid of that text. Okay. Let's say that you have a really cool logo and you want to emboss it on everything you got. Well, you probably have that that exists as a DXF. So what we're going to do is click this insert DXF button. Once we're in the sketch, I'm going to insert this logo. It's Mesa Webhead. It's the copy of my tattoo. 
Um, I traced out the line work and cut it out of sheet metal uh, with our plasma table. So we'll go ahead and import that. A lot of points. Um, I'll say okay. And you'll see a lot of dots. Well, this is a long, big, big project. Um, and I wanted to show this. Don't get discouraged if you plug this in and something like this happens. Like I said, I'm running off of a, a ThinkPad. Um, so not quite a Chromebook, but it does slow down. So same idea if I go here and then let me delete that wrap too. I'll do wrap one, uh, remove. Like I said, faces a sketch one target is this. I'm going to move this up about two and a half inches. Let's see what that does. The reason why it goes so slow is because it's moving every single point, every single instance. I know if you use a lot of import export um, and it was, wasn't completely drawn natively and on shape, sometimes it messes up. Um, you'll see we're messing with this over here. Sometimes it's easier to just drag it. But then you got to wait for the, the scrolling wheel of death uh, to finally catch up. There we go. A little bit more. Go a little higher. Kind of eyeballing it. It's catching up. There we go. All right. So now I have my logo embossed into this piece. Um, I could turn it into... Uh, a cone and it would do the same thing. Um, but this is how you use that feature here. Okay. And we'll say, okay. Shut those planes off. And you'll see now it's embedded. Um, maybe you're going to do some resin uh, fills. This would be really cool if you have a, like a mill, uh, a CNC mill, and you're doing some woodworking or you're engraving into something. Uh, and then later on, take, take, like I said, some resin, do some resin pours. You get some full custom pieces. Uh, and I think this is the, the possibilities you can do with this. The reason it took me so long to use this tool was because I had to find a way or a project that I wanted to use it for. Um, and I hadn't really needed anything thus far. Um, I, I know I've been listening to some of your guys' comments and you're like, oh, I use, I do model airplanes or I do this or I do that. And there's all these different projects and some of those are way out of my league or way above what I've ever done. So I was trying to think uh, in my wheelhouse and how I could do it. And uh, this just kind of came to me um, on how I would go about it. I was like in the tutorial they give you, it's like, oh yeah, you can just wrap the text. But to me, I was like, that's kind of a really useless tool if that's all it's used for. Cause um, what we'll talk about next week is this decal tool. And to me, it seemed like a, like a fancier version of that decal. Um, and basically decal is just says an apply an image to an existing flat or cylindrical face of a part or surface, specify the exact location, size and alignment of the applied image. So something that basically your decal, you're just slapping stickers on top of. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys are learning something. Um, we're bringing back this shifting to solid series. I'm going to try to do a couple, you know, a practice assignment and then a shifting to solids and then a go back and forth. Um, I have some trainings coming up in the summer for some teachers, um, trying to get those front loaded. So they have a bunch of resources they can use at the beginner side. Um, and then hopefully they'll catch up to me as I finish these, these other videos. So, um, if you guys like this video, thank, uh, Russian thunder. He's the one who kind of poked and prodded and got me back into doing this one. Um, but that's going to do it for us today. Hope you guys enjoy. Take care. <laughs>